If you're a business owner putting out social media content or any kind of organic content, I'm gonna give you the three essential pieces to any video content that is gonna be utilized for marketing for your business. Now, essentially what I'm gonna be giving you is a top to bottom structure for each of your videos. Most of this is gonna be for social media content, so it's gonna be for Instagram Reels, TikTok videos, YouTube Shorts, but this is also applicable to podcasting, but it's also applicable to YouTube content. So you can kind of like take and copy and paste this to whatever types of organic content you're gonna be putting out. Now, I know with ads, if you're running a video ad or whatever, say a Facebook ad, it's going to be slightly different. So don't listen to me if you're wanting to run Facebook ads and this is the structure. This is specifically for organic content and specifically for if you're a business owner leveraging these platforms for marketing. So if you're an influencer that's doing dancing TikTok videos and stuff like that, this isn't going to be for you. So just a heads up. The first part of this is going to be your hook. So this is most of the stuff I'm going to be talking about today is nothing new to a lot of people, but it's going to help really structure your videos and th make you think about how you're actually going to be piecing it together for the best bang for your buck. You want to make sure that if you're putting video content out, that it is a good representation of you and your brand, but also it's going to go the extra mile to bring in potential leads and, you know, achieve its purpose, essentially. So the first thing is gonna be your hook. Now, what I like to frame this up as to be the most simple thing that you could possibly do is it's either going to be a very bold question or a very bold statement. So the way I started this video, that was my very bold statement. And I couldn't even tie a question into that. Like, hey, have you ever wondered how to actually start and end your social media videos? Well, I got that for you. And that would be my question that I would start off with something like that. But it's gotta be something very bold. It could be something that's controversial if you wanted to. It really depends on the way that you shake things out like that. I typically shy away from being controversial because I don't really have a purpose for it. But if you're that type of person, be you, right? So with the hook, though, that is going to be the most important part of the video. Now, there's really two factors that play into organic reach. It's click-through rate and retention rate. Retention rate is the duration of the video, which we'll get to here in step number two. The click-through rate is going to be the way that the video is entered into from the consumer. So if somebody is scrolling on YouTube Shorts and they're going through these videos at a rapid pace, is your video going to stop their thumb from scrolling on past your video to the next one? That's your click-through rate. Now, that's framed up slightly different depending on the platform that you're putting content out on, but the principle is the same. How many people stopped to watch your video as they were scrolling through the algorithm they got hit with your video and then they actually stopped to watch it. That's one of the biggest metrics. That's why your hook is so important. Now, there's the whole, you know, humans have a shorter attention span than goldfish and stuff like that. And humans have a seven, you know, second attention span. Guys, there's a secret that is out the window. <laughs> thanks to video, thanks, thanks to short form content like TikTok videos and Instagram reels, the attention span is a lot shorter and it takes a lot more effort to capture their attention more than ever has been before. And a lot of it is not even attention span. A lot of it is the interest peak. I think that we have a cop out of like, well, people just have a short attention span. But to me, it's like, if your video didn't start off strong with a bold statement or question that applied to them and something they have interest in, then the video is not for them in the first place. They are going to scroll past. For example, if I'm going through YouTube Shorts and all I really consume are cooking videos or videos about sneakers or sports, but then I get hit up with a video that's talking about Stanley's, I'm going to scroll past it right away because I have no interest in Stanley's, right? My wife might, but I don't. So it's not going to be an applicable video to me. The algorithm may have given it a shot and put it in front of me just in case, but to me, it was worthless and I didn't have interest, so I'm gonna scroll past it. That is why the hook is so important because you wanna make sure that it's applicable to the interest of your potential consumer so that they will stop their thumb and give it a shot and watch your video. So that's number one. Make sure that you start off with a very strong hook or a question, something simple, a little tool that you could do for this to help make it happen is go to chat GPT and now they have the speak function where you can actually talk to chat GPT. They're going to transcribe it and then answer for you. I like to do it that way as opposed to trying to type out all my thoughts. So I'll literally speak to chat GPT and say, this is the video that I'm wanting to do. Can you please give me a good hook so that I can start the video off strong? And it'll give you a couple options and then you just roll with it. And that's what you, that's what you do. 
And then the very first thing that comes out of your mouth, whether you're doing a long form video or a short form video, that's your hook. So the next part is gonna make up the biggest percentage of your video, which is going to be kind of the core, the meat of the video, if you will. This is the value proposition. This is actually what's happening inside the video. The, the, you know, if it's a YouTube video, it's you know, talking about the topic. It's, if it's a social media video, it's talking about the topic, but you know, eliminating as much fluff as possible to retain attention. This is where that happens. Now, I talked to you about click-through rate and I talked to you, I briefly mentioned about retention rate. Retention rate, this is where it happens. So this is why it's so important to make sure that your video throughout the entirety of the video is engaging because if you ever get a chance, if you have a YouTube channel, do this little exercise. You can YouTube or Google how to look this up if, it, if you can't find it. But go into the backside, go into your YouTube studio, click on one of your videos, and then go to, I believe it's either reach or engagement, and you'll see a graph there that will say retention rate. And basically, mainly what it's gonna do is probably do this a little bit. Now, if it literally slopes all the way down and then goes straight across, that's a problem. What that's indicating to you is the amount of the video that your viewers watch. So if you had 100 people watch your video and then it was a five minute video, but you know 90 people dropped off within the first 10 seconds, your retention rate is gonna be really, really bad. And then maybe everybody else, the last 10 people fell off three minutes in, that's a really bad retention rate. What you typically want is by the end of the video, you still retain about 15 to 30% of your audience, no matter what that is. If you can achieve that, then that's gonna allow the algorithm to say, okay, this video is valuable, so let's put it in front of more audiences. That's really how it works in its simplest form. Now that percentage will fluctuate from time to time, and there's people out there that'll preach like retain 50% retention, and I just think that's a really tall task to do. It can be difficult. It just takes a lot of practice and consistency to achieve that. But when it comes down to it, give the most effort. This is why when you watch social media videos, you'll see a bunch of B-roll and clips that are played onto the video and you have the captions and stuff like that. That's all to literally just retain attention, to entertain the viewer while they're watching the video. So if I'm doing a talking head video, there should be B-roll. There should be graphics that pop up or the little like emoji icon or the captions come up or something like that. That's all stuff that will play into the video to help retain the attention. And that's the biggest part of it. Now, obviously, one of the ways you retain attention is by delivering value. There's typically going to be three categories of video that go out. It's entertainment, information, and education. And information and education are different. Information would be if I'm reviewing the new iPhone and I'm talking about that. I'm not I, technically, I guess I could be entertaining you. I could be, you know, educating you but I'm giving information to you about a particular product. Education is what I'm doing right now. I'm teaching you about a specific thing to do in your business and with your marketing, entertainment, obviously, prank videos, um, you know, walking through sneaker con and reviewing sneakers and stuff like that. That's all entertainment stuff. That's the important thing is to make sure you're delivering value throughout the video. That's, that shouldn't be said, but that's very important. Throughout the video, you should be having your editor snip out any dead space, any ums, ahs, uh, any fluff really, if I go into circles, I'll make sure my editor will take that stuff out to make sure you're condensing it to be the most dense information. The objective should be that your video is not a cup of water, but a cup of jello. So it's really dense and hard to go through, right? Because it's going to give the most contextual value that the viewer can get. And then the last part of it's going to be your call to action. This is where it kind of differs between if you're using it for marketing or if you're just an influencer that's putting videos out. If you're marketing, if you're using the videos for marketing, you should have a call to action. Now, I have a rule that I talk about all the time called the 90-10 rule. 90% of your content should be value, 10% should be call to action. Should be a very small percentage. And you can up that or down that by five to three percent or whatever. Now, here's the thing: when it comes to call to actions, it needs to be quick, snappy, and to the point. Especially if it's a social media video, what I like to do is save and reserve the last three to five seconds for a call to action. So if it's a 45 second video and that's the meat of the content, the last like five seconds, the total video will be 50 seconds. So the last five seconds will be literally the person popping on screen and saying, hey, if you're this person and you need this, make sure you click the link below or make sure you visit my website here and book a call with me or whatever that is. That's the call to action. You can also use the call to action as an inception tool. So basically, if I have a video that's out there, um, like at the end of this video, I'm going to be my call to action is going to be make sure you subscribe to the channel 
make sure you leave a comment below and like and share, right? So that's it's literally inceptionizing the platform because I want you to stay here and get more content from me, right? So I'm gonna encourage you to subscribe. That's the call to action. So it doesn't always have to be like, visit my website and buy this course. It can also be like, follow me or subscribe, whatever it is, that sort of thing. That's really co could be the call to action. It just depends on what your marketing goals are. So that's why it's important to make sure you have your marketing goals and objectives lined up because then you're just using the content as a source of marketing to point people to where you want them to actually go at the end of the day. And I know a lot of people shy away from like selling and doing propositions like that on organic content, but I highly encourage you, especially again, if you are using this as a marketing tool to make sure you do infuse your call to action in there in some way, shape or form. Don't be afraid to do it. This is what it's, this is what you're leveraging these platforms for is marketing. So those are the three core functions of every organic social media content piece or YouTube piece or podcast piece. Hopefully this helps somebody today. This is really the way you should be structuring them. Again, I like to simplify things as I'm breaking down uh, content and the way it should be handled by you. So take this in the strides, like really work on your hook, make sure that you're delivering immense value throughout the entire piece of content and then give a call to action and keep it as simple as that. And then you can critique it from time to time if you want to, you know, don't hesitate to do that. So that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and spending a little time. And hopefully you got some value out of this. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the show and also leave a comment down below if you have any questions and like for me to cover a specific topic about something that you're struggling with or whatever. And then also you can check out the links down in the description below to connect with me. I would very much appreciate that. Thank you guys for listening and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.